So this afternoon, we're coming to visit with Ellen Grenier Bevel. Hi, Ellen, how are you? Hey, Mary Kay, nice to see you. I'm glad you could come visit. Thank you. Ellen is one of the artists who's been in the Talkness Arts Fair for quite a number of years, and she does fiber work. So she invited us over to take a little look at what she does. So <laughs> while she's at her little seat, we're just gonna walk over here. And maybe you can start off by telling us exactly what it's called and what got you started in this in the first place. Well, I am sitting at my favorite weeding loom called Miss Bev because that's the artist I bought it from when she passed away. So I named my looms. And over <laughs> there we've got Wolfie, the small loom. <laughs> <laughs> that's cute. <laughs> but, uh, this is my favorite spot in the whole day. When I get to sit at my loom, look out my window, watch nature, and I'm also here with my library. And these are all fiber books. Yeah, I've had fiber books since I was small. <laughs> I'm a bookaholic. <laughs> so you've been involved with fiber since a yes, young age. my mother taught me how to knit and sew, and then I progressed from there, to picking up all kinds of embroidery, and then I found the um, weaving just by happenstance at the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. And that was in the mid nineties. I loved spinning wheels and I saw the spinners mm -hmm. and the weavers and started going to meetings and didn't weave for the first year I was with the guild. I was just absorbing all this fabulous information and seeing see. all this fabulous stuff being made and learning and just learning. When you got into it, okay, because obviously this is a big piece of equipment right. and, and even little Wolfie over there, we don't want to ignore him. Yes, we don't want to ignore him. But when you started, did you have to get a piece this big initially or did you start in some other manner or how did I that work? I started with my ex-husband building me my first loom. So, but not like this. It was a different model of loom that it was very popular in the old country. But um, I was then given a loom very similar to like this to use for many years. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that's when my weaving really started to progress. The better the equipment, the better the weaving. <laughs> but so you mentioned the Houston Livestock Show. So you lived in Texas or I did you live? In I lived in Houston for about 20 years. Okay. I, I was originally from Northwest Indiana is where I grew up. Okay. So what brought you back up here? And uh, What brought me back up here is my husband at the time died. Mm -hmm. And I'm I couldn't sorry. make a living in North Carolina, so I came back up here to be close to my folks, who have, have since passed away. Mm -hmm. so. so, you got involved in this. Yes. And when you started in it, um, kind of big to take up as a hobby, just having that big piece of machinery, so to speak. <laughs> so, And when, there's other equipment that goes with it, too. As when, you can see, if you pan over to my winding station, that's where I wind off the yarn oh. to go onto the loom. I see. So. so when you got into this then, knowing that you know, it was quite extensive the equipment you needed in that, they had, what did you decide you were gonna make these to sell them or make them because you wanted to make them or? Well, I wanted to make them. Mm -hmm. You know, give us gifts, that whole kind of thing. The Houston Guild, the Contemporary Hand Weavers of Houston, did an annual sale. Hmm. So if you made one scarf and you didn't have somebody else to give another scarf to, you put it in the sale. Oh, okay. So, and I started selling right away. Hmm. So, and household items, which is what I'm working on now is a commission towel set, um, was what I started with. You know, the basic rectangular you know, and then I found over the years, as I kept trying different fibers, um, I loved making wearables. And that's what I concentrate on now. Okay, so the current items you're making, you can wear. Yes. What other kind of items have you made 
So you were mentioning the towels. What other kind of things? Placemats, table runners, you know, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, I do sell my towels at Verbena, which is a gourmet oil shop here in Morris. Oh, okay. So, you know, what? whatever my customer doesn't purchase from this run of towels, mm -hmm. go to the shop. <laughs> okay. So I'm very fortunate to have outlet. Um, I started doing shows about 10 years ago when I kicked corporate out of my life uh, because they were killing me and not giving me any time to leave. What kind of corporate? Like Air Accounting, D. finance, sales okay. support okay. type of thing. And um, the day after I kicked them out, I hit my loom running and I have not quit. And I started building this inventory and my girlfriend said, you're doing art shows. <laughs> <laughs> she had done some in the past with her craft stuff. and she, So she was experienced. So she helped me out with my first few and you know, I've been getting into uh, more fine art shows like the tall grass is rather than the craft shows, because I have a high-end product. Right. <laughs> using sustainable fibers, hand-dyed fibers. So for those who are watching that may not be familiar with the tall grass, you had the jury in. So could you tell us what that means, what your process was? The process for jurying into any fine art show is you send them a picture of your booth so they can see how you present your items, and you send them three very distinct photos, three or four, depending on, on the show, uh, to show what you do, the kind of work you do. And then, you, of course, you send in your um, biography slash artist statement mm -hmm. also. That's yeah. a hard one to write up. Because <laughs> you don't want to say too much, but you don't want to say too little, but you want right. to get your point across. Mm -hmm. And so then they have to select you to be in the show, correct? Correct. Okay, how many years have you participated in the Tall Grass Arts Art Fair? Probably eight. It was one of the first ones I started doing. Okay, yeah, so, so you've been there a while. So, so I've been there a while, and we love the way Tall Grass treats their artists. I mean, they are just the best. So what do they do that when you would say they treat their artists well? Get they, I on mean, that. They, um, they listen to their artists. Uh huh. They have an appreciation dinner on Saturday night, which is, you know, my husband, because he's my <laughs> crew, <laughs> I couldn't right. do this without him setting mm -hmm. up and tearing down. Um, you know, just the whole atmosphere is one of camaraderie and fun. And, and that's what it appears at the artist dinner. So what Evelyn is telling us about this artist dinner, for those who don't know is, uh, the board members of the Tall Grass Arts Association provide everything to give the artists dinner because after a long hard day of work, who wants to go home and try to make something real quick or run to McDonald's, nothing against McDonald's, but you know, run and pick up just something fast food and exactly. then whatever. And so, there's a lot of out of towners. Yes, and there are, so. that's true. There's people coming from other states. So they come in and you seem to have a pretty good time, the artist as a group, when we you're do. there. We do have a good time, and we get to know each other better. I mean, sure, you get to visit a little bit to mm -hmm. your neighbors, or you go off to people and visit with people that you know, because mm -hmm. you build up these friendships over the years that there's nothing like it. That's the one thing I've noticed um, from watching everybody and observing uh, is that you get the chance to meet old friends and then make new friends. Exactly. And it seems it's, that those tables just... are the ones that have the most laughter <laughs> and joy um, and just pure fun. Yeah. So, okay. So. Can you show us a little sample of how this big, huge gizmo works? Sure. Um, I've got a simple pattern on it so I don't have to look. So, at, first of all, if you want to come and, and sure. look at this. After all the threads are wound onto the back, they are pulled through one by one into the heddle using a chart. Mm -hmm. And that establishes the first part of the pattern. Okay. Then they're pulled through the reed. That's what this 
slotted piece is, and that holds everything straight, okay? And then I have down here my treadles, which you play like an organ, and depending on which harness they're lifting, mm -hmm. establishes the second part of the pattern. Okay. So we'll just do real quick, show you how it goes through. Playing the puddles according to the pattern. Huh. That's it's a little bit noisy. <laughs> but it's music to my ears. Yeah, so that's fascinating how that works. So. And I'm just, you know, doing it for the pattern. You don't want to make, you want to make sure that this isn't pulled in too tight, so you do have a, um, a rhythm that you do established. And this particular piece that you're doing right now, do you know right now what it's going to be, or this do you decide that right later? This piece right now is going to be a towel. Okay. I do know That's that. That's a towel. Okay. And um, this is one of the colors my customer has requested. Okay. So that's uh, what I'm doing. I normally don't do household items except that I got into the shop and they love my towel and have used and abused it for the last two years. Because <laughs> well, they never wear out. That's if you get wonderful. a hand woven towel, it never wears out. You use it, wash, dry, repeat. <laughs> I'll be darned. Now, as we see the rest of the fabric that's down in this area. Right. Um, is this, this is the back side. Is this one towel right now that you're doing or do you I have a measuring tape, which will tell me when I get to 36 inches, I've completed the one towel. That allows for hem shrinkage and hemming. Okay. So. Okay. I didn't know if you were doing one by one or you were just doing a big run. I will then... be doing a big run. I should get seven towels out of what I have on the loom. Oh, so you, okay. I, yeah. I understand now. Yeah. So it's more efficient to make it that way than one exactly. towel at a time. Okay. Exactly. And you said, how do they, um, like even for your wearables, how, what is the cleaning and wearing, taking care of process? Um, well, for towels, it's easy. Machine wash and dry, repeat. No dryer sheets or softener. Never on any towel. Okay. <laughs> it's a little tidbit. Um, and as far as my wearables, hand wash, line dry basically, okay. uh, because I use silks and cottons and tinsels. I use a mixture of fibers, and after I'm done weaving a length of fabric, it gets washed and shrunk, so everything, to, I can make sure all the colors don't run, mm -hmm. and it's all pretty shrunk. Okay, so let's compare the towels. That you, how many are you making? Seven, you said? Seven. Okay, so you're making seven towels. So about how long does one towel make uh, take to make? Uh, one towel will take about an, um, an hour to weave. Okay. If, I'm, if I stay at it. So then as opposed to, let's say, one of the um, wearables that you have. Where, that will take at least three hours to weave. And if I have any fringing to do, the fringing takes an hour, hour and a half per side. Okay. So that just adds on to, so like if I'm doing a scarf and it's 10 inches wide, it, that'll take me an hour to fringe. So um, it's, it's quite it, all what you're doing. It, it's quite labor intensive because the loom itself to set up will take a good, you know, after I've wound off the yarns I need, the uh, setting up of the loom will take a good hour, I mean, day or more, depending on the complexity of the uh -huh. pattern I have to thread. So there's quite a bit of time put yes. into one of your wearables. Absolutely. And I consider my wearables fairly priced, considering the types of yarns I use. Um, 
which are and silks and tencels and okay you know they're often hand painted because i like the do you yeah. hand paint them? No, I don't oh. because I don't have the room or the skills. Okay. I, I've tried you bought, it. You buy, you buy them But I buy paint. them okay. from other women entrepreneurs here in the States. Okay. Because why support China? <laughs> oh, me. Okay. So, in this particular piece that you were uh, referencing, that mm -hmm. I have, have here on uh, Miss Lisa, I name my mannequins also. <laughs> I just think it's fun. Uh, this piece has two painted warps threaded one to one. Okay. And then I can just weave it with one shuttle instead of two or three. And that just, and I use a slightly variegated yarn, hand painted, to weave it with. So all that patterning took a lot of effort. Now, at the same time I put this on the loom, mm -hmm. I had, I wove this one also. Ah. And see how different it looks? Because I changed my treadling, how I played my feet, mm -hmm. and also changed the uh, weft color, which is what I have on the shuttle. That's called the weft. Now, I can see the bits of yellow. Is that the same? It's the same. It's, it's it's just how it came out. It's just how it comes up in the uh, as you're weaving it, you know, just the colors that come up. So then that saves you a little bit of time. Then having to reset mm -hmm. the whole thing. Yes, interesting. It does. When you start, okay. So let's take both of these for example. Okay. Okay. So when you started, which was the first one you started? You did. I did this one first. Uh, okay. Did you have that pattern in your mind or did you see it somewhere? No, or I um I use a computer program okay. to help me with my uh patterns. Okay. Okay. And like I said, this I didn't have to go back under the loom to to uh shuffle the treadles around. Okay. How I set them up. But I just changed how I did my feet. I just changed the walking area way. Okay. And um, the computer program helps me see and, and check how many floats there might be so it doesn't snag. Okay. You know, and gives me um, options. But all the fiber books, mm -hmm. I mean, there are gazillion patterns. Okay. That and on the computer that you can play with to make your own. And, so and when you I sit do. down, you know what the piece is going to, the pattern is going to look like. Yes. Okay. But seeing it come to life in color mm -hmm. is magical. It just is magical to say, oh, I envisioned that. That's what it showed me on my screen. Mm -hmm. But because of the play of color mm -hmm. and the painted warps, it's magical. That's all I can say. And that's the fun, the beauty of it all. It sounds like that. And I can see in your face just talking about it, how much <laughs> enjoyment you get out of it. And I can see the yellow in that one too. No, yeah. that was a different setup though of the threads. That was a different threading, a different, um, you know, warp all together. Okay. So you make shawls. I assume you make, um, Scarves, did you say? Scarves, too, but they're all packed away right. for a show this weekend. We, yes, and we've got the art fair coming up, too, yeah. soon. Very interesting. Um, yeah, vests, um, just, you know. So do you go out and buy your thread based on a pattern you've already picked? Or oh, do you buy it? Uh -oh. show you. Uh -oh, uh -oh. Okay, okay, we're going to walk around the corner. Okay. So you want to you can I'll walk follow you around. along. Okay. Now we're going into my other favorite room. <laughs> oh my goodness. If you pan over the this Whoa. wall, that is just my insul I call it my insulation wall because yarn is nothing but insulation. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> so um I have my stash. That's more than a stash, Ellen. <laughs> That's more than a stash. Holy Toledo. So a lot of times, um, and here's, and they're falling onto the floor even, painted warps. 
that's just my tower of painted warps. So say, I, you know, I don't know what to do. I'm just, I'm just sitting here looking at my wall and going, this one's saying me next, me next, me next. Okay. okay? This will make three shawls. <laughs> oh my goodness. The... So, and then I will pull another thread or two. Maybe I'll pull a solid. Maybe I'll pull another painted warp and combine it with this one. And that gives me my really different coloring. So you have the ability to find a pattern, but also to make one of your own choosing. Mm -hmm. Which do you find yourself doing more? 50-50. Okay. 50-50, because it just depends on the muse. Mm -hmm. You know, what I have in my mind. So, okay, and like I said, do you do commission works? Like if somebody comes in and says, I want a shawl with pink and yes, purple. I so do. you do that? I do. I mean, so that's just one. And then the baskets up there are, are my silk skeins. Oh my goodness. You know, and the other craft ideas and cottons. You find time for other crafts? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> you had me worried there. <laughs> and then I have over here, this is the third shawl of those two I showed. That so that's waiting. how it starts out. That's how it starts out. Just okay. To, so I'm just waiting to um, sew it up. But I have a friend that wants to learn how to sew them. So that's why it's here. I'm not done yet. Which explains why you have all this thread yes. over here. Oh. <laughs> For those of us who don't sew very well, this is just um, humongous. Mm -hmm. And this cabinet, which I got from my mother, is full of her threads. Oh, my word. Oh, yeah. Drawers and drawers <laughs> full. And patterns. And sewing patterns. Okay. So. Boy, you've got it all. Oh, well, you know. You have you to. You can have all the colors in the world, but it'll be one elusive color you don't have. Okay, so tell us about your little doodads here that you have. What are these for? These are magnetic pins. They're used for your scarves or shawls or just on your lapel. And the magnets are really strong. You have to twist them to get them off. Mm -hmm. You arrange the magnet. Mm -hmm. Plop the top on in the same direction. Ha! Huh, cute. Yeah. And uh, they won't pull, snag, or poke a hole in any fabric. So they're very versatile. That's and that's just the latest batch. I usually sell a lot of these at the art fairs. So, well, you know, make I come sense. Back and replenish. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, it has been very interesting seeing how you do everything, Ellen. Um, it's just really amazing, especially for somebody who can't even sew like myself. So, <laughs> this is just incredible. All this thread. My, 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 makes me tired looking at it. You've got a lot of work to do ahead of you, it looks like. I have more than enough for my lifetime. However, <laughs> that won't let make me get rid of it. There's enough. always it, more it, you can find. There's always more I can buy, and I do. <laughs> well, you know what? you got to have what you need. That's so. right. That's right. Something might inspire me that I don't have. There you go. So. Well, we will see you on September 16th and 17th at I our art fair. Going. And we are looking forward to seeing you, too. Thank you so much for your time. Oh, Mary Kay, thank you. And thank Tallgrass. You're welcome.